good day, statisticians. I'm sorry, I can't be with you today, but today we shall be learning anyways. Today we're gonna to start looking at how we can ensure that we get a good representative sample. And we said already in class that the best way that to get a good representative sample in an unbiased manner would be through some type of random sampling. So what is random sampling? Well, in essence, the idea of random sampling is very simple. It's simply where we select a sample so that every individual in that population has the same probability of being in the sample so that no one has a better chance or a higher uh, higher chance or a lower chance uh, to be selected. For instance, in convenience sampling, uh, it's not random because the people that are easiest to obtain are gonna be the most likely to be selected for your sample, while those that are very difficult to obtain will be the least likely, right? And so today we're gonna talk about uh, four slash five random sampling techniques so that we can get random samples. So the first method that we're gonna talk about is really the most basic kind. It's got the name simple random sampling. Sampling. Sometimes we call it an SRS, and it's kind of what you have in mind when you think of random sampling, where you randomly select each individual directly from that population. Um, it's kind of what you have in mind when you're picking a random sample. If I wanted to randomly pick a couple of students in class, I might take all their names, put them in a hat, pull out you know five names, and boom, now I've got my uh, simple random sample from that class. Now, the definition of simple random sampling is very technical, and we're not gonna really explain the the, uh, the depth of it today, but, but you should jot it down. Um, the definition of a simple random sample is where every group of N individuals in the population has an equal chance to be selected in the sample. Emphasis on group, right? Now, why is that the definition of simple random sampling? Again, we'll reflect on that in another day. But that simple random sampling is what you typically think of when you pick a random sample. It would be like you take a population, um, you, you give everyone in that population a number, and then you randomly pick numbers, and boom, from those randomly selected numbers, you've got your sample. So that's simple random sampling. Let's move to something that's uh, a little bit more interesting. Suppose we have like a really well-ordered population. You can kind of see here where we've got a bunch of people sort of standing in line waiting for something. I could certainly take uh, a simple random sample. I could uh, number each of these people waiting in line and then randomly pick some of them. But another nice method might be what we call systematic sampling. In systematic sampling, uh, we use some type of pattern to select individuals in an ordered population, right? So you might pick every third person or every fifth person waiting in line and then let them become um, your, your sample. The key here, so that this is truly a random sample, is that you have to randomly choose who will be the starting point um, person within the first K individuals. So if you're gonna pick every third person, you need to pick a random number between one and three and let to figure out where you start your pattern. Will you start with the first person, the second person, or the third person, right? In terms of uh, what your pattern ought to be if you use systematic sampling, typically you could take the size of your population, capital N, divide it by the size of the sample you want, lowercase n, and that could tell your pattern. So among, say, 20 people, if you want four people out of 20, you should pick every fifth person, uh, randomly picking who among the first five will be where you'll begin um, using your pattern of every fifth person. Then you'll get four out of 20. Not that complicated. Uh, systematic sampling. From systematic sampling, we get into some little, uh, uh, some more complicated methods that um, that a lot of times I see my students mess up. Um, the first I want to talk about is stratified sampling. Stratified sampling begins when you have some population. Um, so that certain individuals of that population are similar to each other, but different from others. Like for instance, we have this big population here and somehow we've divided up these individuals into uh, what I'd call turquoise and green and blue. I don't know what those represent, it doesn't matter. But if, if being turquoise, green or blue might be something that matters um, in your population, you might randomly take these people, divide them up into these groups and we call them strata, and then randomly um, pick some people from each of these strata, right? The key here is that you've got these subgroups of a population. Everyone within that little subgroup is similar to each other and different from everyone else. And then you randomly pick some from each of those groups in proportion to how they exist in the population. So here's a nice kind of example of that. Suppose you have six stratum. <laughs> um, I stole this image from something other, a, a textbook online. Uh, but here we have uh, six different stratum and you could see that we randomly select 
uh, apparently three people from each of these strata. You know, so what might be appropriate strata? Sometimes um, you might use like sex or gender or something like that. You might use ethnicity. Um, you might use what uh, class year someone is in. Someone's a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. And you might randomly pick some from each of those groups, like picking, um, say, 10 freshmen, 10 sophomores, 10 juniors, and 10 seniors. Selecting 10 from each assumes that within each grade level, there's a, a there's approximately the same number of students within each grade level. But th that's a nice method, and that will hopefully give you a representative sample from the population of all students. Um, the uh, here's a, here's an example for us to think about. Which of these do you think would be the most appropriate stratifying variable for the situation? So suppose we wanted to estimate the average weight of a backpack for students at Central High School. Which would be the most appropriate stratifying variable? Which of these four strata um, that we break our students up into would be most useful for um, trying to understand uh, the weights of backpacks? What do you think? Uh, class year, gender, homerooms, or ethnicity? Well, any of them you can make a case for, but the one from my experience, maybe from your experience, that I think would be most interesting would be uh, class year. Why? 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders are probably more similar to each other than different when it comes to the weight of their backpacks. Um, I had an a AP statistics student uh, several years ago do a final project where they're actually testing to see uh, which class year students has the heaviest backpacks. And you want to guess which grade level it was? It was the 9th graders. Yeah, they, they, they were carrying like all their books all the time. They didn't quite understand yet that you don't have to do that. Um, and so it was by uh, not a small margin at all, a statistically significant result of the ninth graders seem to carry the most. And so ninth graders, 10th graders, 11th graders, and 12th graders probably are more similar to each other um, and different from everyone else when it comes to backpack weight. Maybe by gender too, Um, um Homeroom, I don't think there would be any difference. The idea of homerooms is that the people within the homerooms are, are, are randomly uh, distributed. So within each homeroom, you're not going to really find that each homeroom is similar to itself and different from everyone else. In fact, every homeroom is kind of like a, an interesting microcosm of the whole school, right? Um, every homeroom that we have at Central, at least uh, with our random distribution to homerooms, um, might have the same kind of variety uh, as any other homeroom. You know, of course, every person is unique, but homeroom, you probably would expect every homeroom to probably have on average the same average backpack weight. So that would be probably, in my opinion, one of the least appropriate um, uh, variables here for stratifying. But that also points us towards um, our, our fourth uh, random sampling method. We had simple random sampling. We had systematic sampling. We have stratified sampling. This leads us to our fourth, which is going to be called cluster sampling. Now, cluster sampling would be really appropriate with something like homerooms. Um, uh, each homeroom is kind of like a little cluster. The population is divided into clusters, and individuals in each cluster um, in the cluster are diverse, right? So, in other words, if you look at one cluster to the next, there's diversity within those clusters. It's not that everyone in that cluster is very similar to each other, like everyone's a freshman. Although that is the case in our homerooms. Um, take that, that that aspect's true, um, but. In terms of some other important characteristics, um, you're not going to have everyone in that cluster be really, really similar to itself and different from everyone else. Uh, farming is an interesting kind of example like that. Um, you can see here, imagine that you had this big field. Um, don't imagine it. You can see it right there. And you see that it's it's divided up in all these little groups. We'll say we wanted to sort of estimate what the, um, uh, what the average uh, volume of crops will obtain from uh, each of these little uh, sections. Well, we could randomly pick uh, some of these sections and measure everything that we can within each section. This would be a kind of cluster sampling where you sample all individuals from a simple random sample of clusters, right? And in general, this is a nice little uh, rule of thumb that I found some students have um, uh, use and like in terms of distinguishing cluster from stratified. In cluster sampling, we sample all individuals from some clusters. Um, in stratified sampling, we, sa we sample some from all. Going back to like the homeroom example, if I wanted to, to do a survey at Central High School, I could randomly select some homerooms and survey everyone in those homerooms. Some homerooms and everyone in those homerooms, that would be a kind of cluster sample. Or I could do a stratified method. What would that look like? 
Well, what if I just sampled a couple students from every homeroom? I went to every single homeroom and I randomly picked a couple of kids from every single homeroom. That would be stratified sampling. Some from all homerooms versus cluster where I'll sample all students from some homerooms. Is that distinction cool? All right, let's think about, um, Ooh, and I forgot I had this little image once again stolen from a, a nice textbook, a nice online textbook. Here, uh, unlike stratified sampling, we didn't get some from every single group. Here, we just selected certain groups at random and sampled everyone in them, cluster sampling. Very, very nice. So let's think of this example. Um, which would be the most appropriate cluster sampling method here? Suppose you wanted to study people's opinion on a program to increase awareness on environmental issues. Which would describe appropriate cluster sampling? All right, let's go through. A, individuals are classified by political affiliation. Randomly sample some from each political affiliation. B, individuals are classified by a political affiliation. Sample all individuals from SRS of political affiliations. C, individuals are organized by neighborhood blocks. Randomly sample some people from each block. And D, individuals are organized by neighborhood blocks. Sample all people from an SRS of neighborhood blocks. All right, so which would be the most appropriate cluster sampling? Well, we can already, think about it. Uh -huh. Hopefully you can already eliminate a couple of choices. I would already eliminate, um, which ones? I would random already eliminate A, and I would already eliminate uh, C. Why am I eliminating them? Well, first of all, those sound more like stratified sampling. In A, you randomly sample some from each political affiliation, so that's some from all. Similarly, in C, you randomly sample some people from each block, some from all. Once again, some from all, that's stratified. That's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to do cluster. So it's not A and it's not C. That leads us between B and D. In both of these, you're sampling all from some. Right. Sample all individuals from an SRS of political affiliations or sample all people from an SRS of neighborhood blocks. Which would be best for cluster? Correct answer is D. Ah, OK, why? Well, what's the key difference? Both of them kind of sound like cluster, all from some. But the key is what is the variable that we're considering when it comes to stratifying slash clustering? Right. In this case, um, neighborhood blocks would be a good clustering variable, right? Where people live on blocks, because theoretically, um, I mean, you have life experience, um, but one block to the next is not identical, but there's a similar kind of variation within each um, that exists within uh, one block to the next. In other words, it doesn't matter so much which blocks you take to, to analyze this. Maybe it does, but for the most part, one block versus another block, what's the huge difference there? But when it comes to political affiliations, especially about environmental issues, you're gonna have a very big difference. Do you think if you just pick Republicans versus just picking independents versus just picking Democrats, um, that that would give you a good picture of the population, a representative sample? No, because within each political affiliation, people tend to be the same as each other and different from folks in other political affiliations. And so um, B, um, the, the political affiliation thing, would not be appropriate for cluster sampling at all. If I wanted to have the best stratified sampling, say I changed the question, instead of looking for the best stratified sampling, then I would pick A. Uh, a is nice because I would randomly sample some from each political affiliation, and that would potentially give me a better um, uh, sampling as well, too. So for cluster sampling, D is the best. If it was stratified sampling, A would be the best. Okay. All right. So let's move on to kind of a more challenging case and trying to understand how all these work, too, what, uh, and, and, and get to what, what might be considered a fifth random sampling method that kind of just combines a couple. Consider this. Um, suppose we're interested in estimating the malaria rate in a densely tropical portion of rural Indonesia. I don't remember where I came up with this example. Uh, I probably stole it from somewhere. Uh, we learn that there are 30 villages in that part of the Indonesian jungle, each more or less similar to the next. So one village more or less similar to the next. Our goal is to test at least 100 individual, excuse me, 150 individuals for malaria. What sampling method should we use? All right. Our goal is to get 150 people. These people are in these rural villages. Um, what should we do? Well, 
I already have some thoughts. Could we do a simple random sample here? Well, potentially, right? We could do a simple random sample, but uh, that might be really hard. Uh, if we just had a, a all these folks living in all these villages in this dense tropical area, it would be very difficult to get a, a, a nice sampling frame, uh, which is a sampling frame is what we call the list of all the individuals in the population from which we're taking our sample. It'd probably be difficult to come up with a good sampling frame and then for instance, number the people and then randomly pick them. So I, I don't even know how we would do that. Doing a simple random sample would probably be too difficult to do. Stratified sampling, um, that could work, but it, I don't know if it makes sense to do a strata here because notice that, for instance, villages, which was an interesting variable, it said that uh, that, that people within each village are, uh, are pretty much similar to each other, but also each village is pretty similar to every other. So it wouldn't make sense to really um, sample some from each village and call that stratified sampling. Um, so I, it, what stratified variable should we use? We don't have any good indications of any right now. Cluster sampling would be good, right? First, we might randomly select 10 of village and test everyone in those villages. That would be good cluster sampling. Um, instead of going to all 30 villages, we could simply uh, go to a couple of them, three or four, and sample everyone in them. And, and even that though, could be problematic because it might be difficult to get to everyone uh, in each of those villages. So there's another kind of sampling method that we might refer to called multi-stage cluster sampling. Um, to me, it seems like a good idea. We could first randomly select some of the villages, say half, and then select 10 from each of those villages. So in this case, right, um, as I say here, this would probably reduce our data collection costs substantially in comparison to the simple random sample and give us reliable information. So multi-stage cluster sampling is kind of like this, right? Where you have um, some from some. Remember, some from all is stratified, all from some is cluster, and multi-stage cluster is some from some. Here, uh, once again, we have the population divided up into clusters. And then we take a simple random sample of clusters from the population. But, oh, we're not done taking simple random samples. We're then going to take a simple random sample of the individuals within each of those clusters so that we get a smaller group. Um, this here is our multi-stage cluster. So there we go, folks. What did we learn about today? We talked about uh, simple random samples. We talked about systematic sampling. We talked about uh, cluster sampling. We talked about stratified sampling, and we also ended with multi-stage cluster sampling. Hope this gives you a nice snapshot of what we would have otherwise learned in class today. Um, good luck working on your assignment, and have a beautiful day.